Okay. We have to take the auger housing off the main body, and we also have to remove the motor from the transmission housing, which is the main body, so that we can get at this and weld this up. I actually think it's okay. I checked the gears out. You guys saw the beginning of that other video. So now I'm just going to uh, go slow and uh, I think I'll take the motor off first while I still have the stability of the auger housing. Uh, now, now the only place it's connected now, because I've got the belts off, right? The belt, I took that belt off there. It comes off easy. You just push this back and then the belt that drives the transmission is off and the belt that drives the auger is off. So we'll just check for other connections. And I think it's just four 3 8 bolts. Cool! Some of them I might be able to get off with, with this. Maybe. about it is we can run this motor on the bench if we want. I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side and we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> well, that one's not an easy one. Yeah, there's always one, eh? There's an overhang here. Okay, we got a separate parts tray for this one. No, this last one. Now, if my plan is correct, that motor should just lift off of there. I'm going to go this way away from you. Okay, that's it. I'm going to just stick it on the gardening bench. Now we're going to watch that carburetor like a hot. Put the gas over there. Put the gas over there in all rags too because we're eventually going to be welding. We don't need, we don't need any welding excitement. Now, oh, let's get this auger off of here. We'll go slow. That looks like a half inch. Now I know these are heavy, but they're not ridiculously heavy. So once I take this last bolt out, it should crack open, and we should have. Oh, let's. We got to take this. Uh, um, what do you call it? Shoot controller off. I think I can do it with this. If I can reach it. Nine sixteenths for one thing. Just flew off. Oh, a broken chunk of plastic. Crazy glue. And a nylon nut all the way, eh? Now, can I take this off of here? Oh, it's just got a little cotter pin. Yes, I think I'm going to take that off. So I'll show you what I'm doing. It's really small. That little cotter pin right there. And I'm working it, letting 
you guys see, this has been off a couple times. My goal is to have this thing back together when Mrs. Bruce gets home today. So when I got something like this, that cotter pin just broke. I always just do something like a tape or something to keep from losing that little part. And this broken clip too. I'm sure we can crazy glue that. All right. So now the only thing holding us from separating this housing from this transmission is this one bolt, I think. Oh, there's one at the bottom. It's a rotator. And it's a half inch too, remember that? I might have to use a socket. I'm not taking that one all the way up because I want to lift it off of there. Same thing on this side. Okay, half inch. Perfect dog. I'm just doing the same bolt. I think I'm going to lower this down. And we'll take out that last bolt. Should come apart. guys I'm almost tempted to take the handles off there's only two control rods one uh, three one two and three and they look like they would just once I get the center one off they would just pop off just looking So that's the gear shift, gear selector, auger control, and auger drive. See that? I'm going to need as much, much, much access to that as possible. I'll be right back. That was a movie producer. I got that from Road King. So, I think I need to get this box down as small as I can. Although having the handles on there, let's just turn this over like this.
I don't know, I'm looking at it. And it's greasy. So I'm going to take the handlebars off. So the first thing to take off will be this, the gear selector. And it might just spin, so. Oh, isn't that nice? I tell you. That was a good idea I had getting that electric impact. Joke. Wasn't my idea, but I'm sure enjoying it. No, I just have to unhook these hooks and they'll come off when I undo the handlebar. This is the exciting part. I hope not. And the other one I got off with just this. Now this is where things are going to collapse. So. Okay. Yeah, we have a box to work on, and weld, and all kinds of fun stuff. This is the uh, one piece that broke. I have to weld that back in there. Oh, and this tack broke here, and that tack broke there. So we're going to learn a lot here in the next little while. Yes, are you seeing that? So this is this has come off, right? There and there. We can squeeze that together and weld it first, I think. And we'll get this cap off the top. And then there's a big split down the side and some other minor ones. So we got some welding to do, but most of it's gonna be from the top. Cool. Okay guys. I just took, I had this bottom cover already loose, I just took the two screws out by hand. And now we are going to have a look at how we can weld this up. I don't think there's much we can do from this angle, but it'll give me more light to work with. It's this plate here, there, and there. We can squeeze that together and weld it first, I think. I don't know where else it's welded. This plate has been sheared away from there and there. See that? And then also this cover, this cover right here, uh, snapped off at the same time and then it's split down here. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean this up, do a little bit of grinding on the edges. And we'll come back, change my, I'm going to put a face shield on it instead. We'll just start with a wire brush. And I'm just going to do a little, can you still see this? Yes, I'm still going to do a little cleaning up. And I'll show you what I've got when we come back. Because uh, it's just so time consuming and I'll just end up running out of, running out of time. And you guys will be so bored, you'll be, going to watch afternoon TV. I'll see you in a bit. I'm just going to do this here. Okay. Down past the paint. And I might use a flap wheel. I'm just doing the safety stuff right now, all right? Mask, plugs, gloves. I'm learning. I'm surprised I can still count to 21. 
Okay guys, I'm going to start with this piece right here. And it, I'm going to have to, I don't even think I can clamp it in place. I'm going to have to just hold it and tack it because that's the way it is. So my gloves are going to have to get beefed up a little bit. I'm using stick welding today, not wire feed, just because I know it's a joke, but just because stick welding sticks better. So I need a welding mask, just to hang on. I'll be needing everything out there. The whole shop's coming up. And I'm going to try a new rod right off the bat here. I've got a strong tack there and there to go around that seam but the motor has to sit flush in there too eh? I'm tempted to go to wire feed but the stubbornness in me wants to keep going this direction so that's in there now the next thing to do is to tack weld that so we'll just take our time some porosity in those welds. But now I want to just turn everything off and see if we have gear shifts and all that stuff. Whew, that's hot. So now I'm going to just have a good look at this thing. Sorry, I'm talking loud. I've got my earplugs on. It's like a deaf person. Jeez, I think we got it. I think I'm going to finish welding it up. Ooh. Be right back. Okay, my friends, I have switched to the wire feed welder. It's just too much penetration with the... It's fairly... It's almost like sheet metal, right? I'm just going to try a couple of runs here. We'll see how I do. Oh, <laughs> power, speed. Good. It's going to work. A little tiny bit more wire speed, I think. A little tiny less wire speed.
Oh boy. Well, we're just going to have to weld this in place. <laughs> it shifted. Got a little work to do. I know a claw hammer is not normally the tool, but... There, that'll work. If I can hold that up. Just need to tap it. All right. Now let's go to town. Watching a little bit more and then we'll shut you down. Much better. I'm actually seeing the puddle. That's rare. Oh, I'm great. So, we'll turn you off now. Okay, you missed some of the best part. I, I switched up and went back to stick welding. And I got a great bead down the one side here. Right down there. Now I'm going to go back and work on this one. It's pretty rough. again okay there we are guys all the places it was cracked that's the piece I added yes it's lumpy and there's the crack from down the side on the the crack from on the side down the front down the uh, whole corner of the unit and then the cracks between the bolts and then just a few crack repairs over here and then the biggie but I don't want to show you because it's ugly as a mud fence eh? but there we are and uh, 
It was only spot welded in two places before, so I'm sure it's grabbed somewhere along the way. And then this one in here is much better. So I think that's it. I'm going to clean up and see if I can put this bad boy back together again before the day is over. But I don't think I'm going to have enough time. Thanks, guys. So we got snowblower, snowblower parts there, snowblower parts there, snowblower parts there, no leaks. So yeah, we're cooking. <laughs>